So, <coughs> so <coughs> sorry, I <coughs> kind of lost my voice in the other class, so it's good to go get some sip of hot water. All right, <coughs> so down to this point of our um, understanding of C, we learned to uh, get information from the keyboard, from the console, let's put a professional name for it, from the console, print information on console, uh, process the information that comes in in various different types of ways by making decisions based on values of the things that we are receiving. They were all numbers, by the way. We never uh, were capable of receiving uh, anything by, by single characters. And uh, as a matter of fact, we know that characters are not even characters. Characters are just small integers. Um, and uh, we are just showing their shape. Uh, so when you're saying percent %c in your, uh, in your um, printf, you're actually telling to, the, to everyone that, hey, I want uh, the shape with this code to get printed. So when you have something in your program, when you have something in your program that says, for example, printf percent %a, percent %c, and then you put over here, say, a, the reason that you are putting that single quotes around A is that you cannot remember what the code for A was. That's the reason. That's why we have single quotes. Single quotes are actually operators that extract the code of that shape. There is no character in C language. It is just a small integer, which means I could actually do this so if I, if I run this program, we will see that it's going to actually execute and run and show me a, a, a capital A over there. But I could simply do the exact same thing by doing this and put over here 65. Because I know 65 is the ASCII code of A. And if I print that one, we'll see the outcome is exactly A. And the same way, if I actually have these two values and print them as percent %d, then both are going to be 65, because the code of A is 65. So characters in C language are nothing but small integers. They don't go more than 255. 0 to 255, that's what a, char that's what a character, that's what an ASCII code of a character is. So if we actually Google it and see what is the ASCII code. So I'm going to say ASCII table, OK? And bring one of these out. You will see exactly what I mean. So which one is, looks better? Let's put this there, bring this one up. And There we go. So when you look at it, it actually shows you exactly what is the code. And it shows the decimal, hexadecimal, and oct. Decimal is what we're interested in. So that's why capital A was 65, as you see. And lowercase a is actually 97. So if I told you to write a program that prints from A to Z, your program could simply be a loop. You can simply say for i for so I'll put integer i in here. I'm going to say for i set to zero and i less than how many alphabets in a how many character how many character uh, letters 26 26 i plus plus. All I need to do is to say printf percent c c and I put a where is a plus i because first one is zero. It's going to be 65. It's going to keep adding up, and at the end, and at the end, it's going to it's going to go to new line. So if I actually run this program, we're going to have A to Z printed. It's the same thing, no difference, right? Or if I didn't want to actually do it that way, I could write it even an easier way, saying. A is set to 
i is set to a, i less than or equal to z, because they are just integers, right? And i plus plus, and just show i. Correct? It's a loop. I'm saying start from this, go up to that value, and print them one by one. Right? So if I would tell how to, so if I would say character CH is, say, W, turn it to a lowercase. How can you turn that to a lowercase? It's easy. I can simply say CH minus equal and put the difference between any two lowercase and uppercase. So I would say minus A minus a, that's the difference between a lowercase and an uppercase, right? And if I actually put care of that one, oh, I have a CH already somewhere, right? Or, or I don't, no. See, now if I do put care CH in here, put care CH before, and put care new line, you will see that it becomes lowercase. Now if I actually run it, you will see that I have, oh, seven? What did I do? minus or plus equal because upper the ASCII code of lowercase is higher than uppercase. <laughs> okay, it was plus equal. I did minus equal by mistake. There you go. So now I have lowercase and uppercase. So just keep that in mind. First, that's the thing. I had to put that thing aside because people always think when I say character, I really, there is some place in the memory where the shape of A is held. That's not the case. You have one byte, it's an integer in there. You just tell to the compiler, I want the shape with this code to get printed. That's how we used to actually change the language of the computer. We would go to the graphics card and actually upload new shapes because my mother tongue was Farsi. And I, I wanted to print those when we didn't have unique characters, Unicode and stuff like that. We did that, we just overloaded the thing so the shapes changed and when I said A, it was print some weird Farsi character for me. So, so there is no difference. So we, we, under, we all understand what characters are, right? Okay, so let's set that aside, okay? And then we're gonna start a lecture today. First, I wanted to put that in a clear so we know what it is. So um, in here, I'm just gonna say, uh, uh, lower casing the uh, W inside CH, okay? So why do we have single code? Because we can't remember. That's all. When you put a literal double code, that's a different story. We're going to come to it soon. You're going to see exactly what that is. So, so now we know, we know all the good stuff over here, so uh, let's, uh, uh, I'm going to say over here, the truth about characters in C. Next thing that we need to learn today is is saying I'm done with reading a single thing and try to process like that. Like uh, I would tell, let's say, let's say I'll give you a program like this. Get 20 integers and find the maximum between them. What do we do? We create a variable. One by one, we're going to get it. We're going to have a maximum thing done over there, and we're going to so Let's actually write it as a review, OK? So I want to. I want to get 20 integers, so I'm going to have some integer for num. So I'm going to get the number, and I'm going to have an integer max, okay? Then in here, I'm going to have an integer counter, or CNT. That's going to be zero. Then I'm going to say for, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I'm going to get them one by one, and I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to say over here, um, CNT doesn't need to be zero. I can just go four. So I'm going to say four int. I'm not going to go 20. I'll go five because we've got to get bored of me entering integers 20 times. So I'm going to say for, in, uh, for uh, CNT uh, being equal to zero and CNT less than five and CNT plus plus, 
Now, if I'm kind enough, I'm going to show them a row number. So I'm going to say printf. I'm going to put a percent %d, and I'm going to show the row number so they can actually enter the number for me. Uh, and in here, I'm going to say cnt plus 1. We know that. We all know that. And I'm going to say if cnt is equal to 0, I'm going to say max is equal to uh, num. But I'm going to get it. I, I haven't get it yet. So scanf in here is going to be percent %d. Uh, and the number, okay? Let me add my utils over here too, include utils, okay? You know, we can flush after that because we know there's a new line over there. I'm not going to do it. So if cnt is equal to zero, max is equal to number. Otherwise, so let's actually write it properly. And in here, I'm going to say otherwise if uh, um, num that I'm receiving is greater than max, then update the max to be num, right? And at the end, when everything is done, uh, I'm going to say uh, oh, uh, printf, uh, the largest value is, and I'm going to put over here percent %d and num. Uh, and max. Let's walk through it, see if I did it right. So that for loop means I'm doing something five times. No hidden agenda over there. Then what I do next over there is uh, I'm printing a row number so they know which number they are adding. And because uh, in C we start from zero, uh, I'm just adding one to it so they know it's row number one. You show row zero to people, they get scared. They don't understand what the heck is zero. Zero is not very familiar number for uh, uh, simple folks. <laughs> so that way. Okay, so <clears throat> then I'm going to do a scan of for num. I get the number. If this is the first time I'm getting it, I'm going to say max is num. Okay? If it's not the first time, I'm going to check the number. If it's greater than max, max is not max anymore, right? So I'm just going to add one to it and keep going like that. So. Let's run it and see if it works, and then I'm going to create a new problem and teach you something new to be able to solve that problem. It's always the best way like that, to show you what the problem is and then show you the solution for it. So if I run this beautiful program of mine three years later, I'm going to have 20, 20, 30, 1, 50, and the largest value is 50. We're all okay with this? Anybody have any question with this? OK, so step by step goes like this. Come over here, and we, oh, uh, I should have run it first. I forgot, and I'll do it. No, so. so to see, and to walk through and see exactly what the values are, I'm going to show you something. So I need to know what the number is that I'm receiving. So you can simply say, add watch. So it adds it to watch list. And what is the maximum value? Add watch. What is the CNT value? Add watch. The good thing is that now it's going to actually show you the values as I'm running through them. It's a beautiful thing. So I run it. So as you see, they are all garbage, right? As soon as it comes over here, CNT is now 0, correct? And it shows CNT plus 1. If I can't do the math, I can actually add the whole thing to watch. I know it's nuts for me to do that, but I'm doing it anyway. Add watch, so it actually shows CNT plus 1 is 1. <laughs> I know it's funny, but hey. OK, so uh, now it says printf. It shows 1. Now it scans the number. So in here, I'm going to put 10. I hit Enter. As you see now, num is 10. CNT is equal to 0, so this is the first time I'm getting it. I need to set my maximum to one of the things that I'm receiving. So I'm setting that maximum because this is the first time. I'm going to say there is nothing to compare to, so this is the maximum number. So now max becomes 10, as you see. Then it comes out, goes up over here. CNT will be added by 1, as you see, and CNT plus 1 becomes 2. The next number is received. Let's say I put 20 in here and I hit Enter. This is not the first time I'm running. CNT is not equal to 0. It goes to else. And else has another if, asking if num is greater than max or not. I can even 
see what is the value of that. And if I right click and add that to watch, you will see that the value is true over there. Right? So now the value is true if it's going to happen. Therefore, max will be updated to the value that is 20. Now I go up again. CNT will be added by one. I'm going to get another one. And this time, I'm going to enter, say, 15. I hit 15. CNT is not zero. It's not going to happen. It comes over here. Is max greater than, uh, num greater than max? No, I don't need to update the maximum. It goes out, comes back up. The next one, I, I put the next one in. Let's say I put 40, and it goes 40. 40 is greater than 20, therefore it's true. Max will be updated to 40. And the last one, I'm going to enter 30, and I hit enter. It comes over here. It comes over here. Uh, it is not true. It's not going to get updated. Now CNT less than 5 will be true, which means, uh, oh, what is, the, oh, CNT is, uh, CNT is 4. So uh, it is not less than 5 anymore. It is false. It comes out, and therefore max is printed as 40. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? So this was enter five numbers and find the maximum and print it, right? That's what we did. Anybody have any problem with this? Are we okay? Now I'm going to create the problem. What is the problem? So I'm going to save this. B, find max of 5. Oh, CPP, shoot. Uh, I'll, I'll change that to C afterwards. My apologies. Sorry. Anyways, so now I'm going to change it like this. Enter five numbers, find the maximum, print all the numbers and the maximum. Now we're in trouble. How can I print all the numbers? Every time I'm overloading the old one. Hmm? So, so what if it's 5,000? You're going to create 5,000 integers? <laughs> so, so this is not going to work out. I need a process in which, instead of creating a single variable, I'll be able to create series of variables and identify them with indexes. So I like to actually create five numbers and say number zero, number one, number two, number three, number four. You got what I just said. Five numbers, number zero, number one, number two, number three, number four. So if I have 25 integers, what are the valid index in here? 0, 2, 24. Do we all understand this? The syntax for such a thing, instead of creating one number, is to just write in front of it, in the notation of an array, how many do you want? Done. Now I have five integers. What are the valid index for these? 0, 2. Four. Do we all understand this? Okay, so, so in here I'm going to actually mention it. I have five integers from num0 to num4, not num5. Are we okay with this? So all I need to do in my code is to go where and do just, do just that. Isn't CNT going from 0 to 5? So I use that as my index. I'm going to say scan num CNT. And all these things will be CNT. CNT, C oh. And CNT and C and T. So what's going to happen in here? 
it's going to say, start from zero, go up to four. That's five times. Show the number. Read the first one in address of num cnt zero becomes num zero. Then cnt is zero, max is equal to, right? And it keeps going like that. So it, it works. I didn't change anything in my code. All I did was created several integers. Now the difference is that every single time I am putting the value in the next one. And at the end, from 0 to 5, I have all the numbers. So I can now actually mention something like this. I can write over here what I can write. I can write 4 CNT set to 0. CNT is a little too long. If you don't mind, I'm going to change that to I because I want to keep writing it. And, and CNT is usually uh, index, of, index of a pointer is it, Index of a loop is uh, identified with i. So I'm going to put i in here. My apologies on that. I'm a lazy guy, so I'm going to change that all to i. And that's what's going to happen now. OK, so, so that makes that looks beautiful, more beautiful. So in here, I'm going to say again, i set to 0, i less than 5 again, and i plus plus. Now in here, I want to print them, right? One by one, I want to print them. So I'm going to say, and let's make it comma separated. So I'm going to say, Printf, printf, okay, and now I'm going to say, so I'm going to have to put num percent d, so I'll put over here, and I'm going to put a comma, and I'm going to say over here uh, num i, okay, and the, but the, well, there's one problem over here, uh, I'm going to have a comma at, after the last one too, right? Okay, so we'll fix that later. Let's first do it like this. So in here, I'm going to say these are the values. So I'm going to say print, and let's make it space separated so it does, it's not visible. <laughs> we'll fix that later. Okay, so now in here, I'm going to say uh, the numbers are uh, So now if I run the program, I'm just going to run it first. Then if you want, I can walk through. But I don't think there is much need for walkthrough because it's completely obvious. So if I run it like this three years later, now I'm going to put over here 10, 20, uh, 60, 40, and 5. Now it's going to tell me the numbers are 10, 20, 60, 40, and 5, and the largest value is 60. So as you see, this actually, we call it an integer array. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? So we know the syntax, right? I just want to understand, I want you to understand what the syntax is. And after understanding what the syntax is, I'm going to give you the limitations. And God, we have limitations. Okay, C language is a very primitive language. When I say primitive, it's, it's extremely low level. To keep that power of being low level, they have to ask you to take care of lots of things instead of language. If the language would have taken of, uh, like for example, <laughs> the C language is not aware of what size of an array is. I put five over there, I can keep going. <laughs> If, it's, if I go more than five, garbage is going to get printed, and soon it's going to crash your program because you are going in someone else's memory. So it is five over here. I can actually print, say, 50. And if I run the program, this is what's going to happen. I'll go 10, 20, 50, 30, and 5, and this is what happens. <laughs> It goes wherever that array is in memory, it's going to keep going from there. It doesn't know what is the size. And as soon as you get out of your own segment, like if I did that on Linux, it would have stopped you in a second and tell you segmentation fault, core dumped immediately. What, what that means, segmentation fault, core dumped, is that you went out of your segment in memory. That's segmentation fault. Core dumped is that it essentially takes a Xerox of the status of the memory when you are in, and it dumps it on a hard drive. So you can 
study it and see what did you, what did you do wrong. Okay, so that's whenever you see segmentation for a core dump, it means you went off your limit. Okay, so that's one of the limitations, the size of the array. It's an, it's, and, and that's uh, something that you, that you need to understand. <clears throat> so are we okay with this? Do we understand this? <clears throat> so we can't go, so yeah, it, you have to remember that, that uh, arrays are not like that. So <clears throat> another thing is that it's a side effect that is actually pretty useful. So, uh, do we all understand what, or so, like, if, if I talk, to, talk about an array over here, um, like, I can give you different things of characters and doubles and all this stuff so we understand how everything works. I don't want to go give you too many examples and clutter your brain. One, while we understand what arrays are, I'm going to kind of set all the foundation for it, and then we're going to go after that. <clears throat> you can pass, we have done it before, you can pass a value to a function, correct? So you have a function, you pass it an integer, and function receives that integer and does something. Because an array is not single entity, you can't do that. You can't pass the entire array, okay? What you do, first you get scared to death, then, <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> okay, somebody smashed our door. <clears throat> Backtrack. <laughs> what you can do is to tell to the function what I'm passing to you is the name of the array and what it looks like. Okay? So the function will get the name of the array. But the thing is that it's not going to copy the array into a new one where you can do anything to it. I'll explain. So the first limitation of array was what? The size, we don't know what it is. Second limitation. So this one is, I'm going to call it array intro. We'll go back to that one, but I'm just going to give you an example with a function just to remember what functions are. So <clears throat> if I have over here void foo, integer num, OK? And in here, I'm going to say num is equal to 100, OK? So I create the useless function called foo that simply sets the num to 100. Now in here, if I have integer x set to 200, and I say foo x, and I say printf, percent d and x. Nothing's going to happen to x. Nothing is going to happen to x. x will remain 200. Why? Because when the function is called, this is what happens. Behind the scene, this is what happens. Foo is called integer num set to x. This is how foo is called. So it literally passes the x to num. So num becomes a copy of x. It's not the x, right? So whatever I do to num, I'm doing to a copy of x. x remains the same. Has, nothing has changed to it. We OK with this? OK? So now, if I actually run this program, it remains 200, right? <clears throat> so we're going to learn something new in here. First of all, how I initialized x, I can actually initialize my arrays too. Anybody over here studied math ever in their lives? <laughs> no? Math. Like, anybody knows what is, uh, like, a little bit of set, sets in math? How do they write sets in math? <laughs> Anybody's scared? Like, I, I literally see that the hair on back of your neck is going up. Okay. Um, a set in math is done using curly brackets. So if you wanna if you wanna show five numbers, you write it like this, right? You do like this, you go 10, 20, 
3, 5, and 9, right? That's math, right? That's it. Just remember that. That's five numbers, right? Okay, good. So, I can, let's say, create an integer array of three integers, okay? You can initialize it exactly like that. So put a set over here and say 20, 5, 4, and 92. This means array 0 is equal to 20, and array 1 is equal to 4, and array, let's actually make it less, 4, and I'm going to make this one, actually, yeah, and array 2 will be set to 92, okay, and I'm going to make this one 30, and the rest are zeros. Got it? That's how you initialize array. If, it's, if the number is a match, everything is set. If you don't put enough, the rest will be zero. That's actually a very useful tool, because if you want to set everything to zero, all you need to do is to put one zero over there. Therefore, everything's going to be set to zero, right? Because the first one will be set to zero, and everything else will be zero. But there is no way to set everything to 95. You can't do that. Only setting to zero is possible. Okay, that's another limitation. Okay, so now I have 30, uh, uh, and again, you know that I, I don't like big names, so that array thingy, um, I'm going <laughs> to change it again to AR. Are we okay with this? Okay, so you can actually pass an array to a function, but there is a side effect to it. First of all, how do we pass an array to a function? We said there is no way for C language to know what is the size of an array, okay? And you cannot pass the entire array to a function. So what you do, so in here, let's say I want to write a function to print all the elements of the array. So I'm going to say print, and in here I want to pass an array, right? Let's call it over here nums. How do I indicate this is an array? You put something over there with no size in it, because that's what C does. C doesn't understand. C knows what's coming in is an array. What is the size? No clue. Good thing is that we know function can accept values, right? So what I can do over here is to pass a second argument saying integer size. Right? So when I pass, I can tell how many. And in here now, I can have an integer i, say for i set to 0, i less than size, and i plus plus, and then I print them individually. So I can actually say over here, uh, printf percent uh, d, let's call it prn ints. So we are printing integers. Let's put it properly. Okay? And I'm going to actually make it comma separated this time. Per, I'm, sorry, I'm going to show percent %d, and then after percent %d, I'm going to show, what am I going to show? I'm going to show the number, correct? So that's nums i, correct? I'm showing it like that. And I want to have it comma separated, so there are two ways of doing it. Either, so let's do it like this. So, so when you put comma, you put the first one, you print the first one, you put a comma next, until this is the last one. If it's the last one, you shouldn't put any commas anymore, right? And if statement will do it for us. So I'm going to say if i is not equal size minus 1, because that's the last one, correct? We said minus 1 is the last one. Then put char, or put, we want to have a space too, put uh, uh, p, pr printf, uh, a comma and a space, okay? So it's got to put a comma, space, making it ready for next one. 
So if it's the last one, no comma is going to get printed. And after that, I'm going to say printf go to new line. OK? So now that array is 30 over there, correct? I don't have to print all the 30. I can say pr and ints because c is not aware how many. It's 30. I'm going to lie. I'm going to say ar and 3. <laughs> it's just print three of them. It doesn't know it's 30. I give them a big array, but I said print the first three ones. It doesn't know that there is more. It doesn't need to know that it's more. For that pre or an int, it doesn't matter what the size of nums is. All it knows is that nums is an array. That's it. What is the size? No clue. Are we okay with this? So now if I print this, run this program, it actually prints the, the numbers. 20, 40, 92, and the next one is the 200 for foo. That we were showing. Let's put it. So why is it printing? What the devil just happened? Did I see that right? No, just give me a second. Oh, yes, idiot. Okay. <laughs> I'm calling myself idiot. Don't worry. Okay. <clears throat> I thought I'm printing in foo, but I'm not. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, as we mentioned, we cannot pass the entire array to a function. We can only tell what is coming in is this type of an integer. It is, it's this type of an array. So to just show it to you, I can have integer vows in here that is really three and is set to 30, 20, and 10, right? And I can call the exact same function now passing vows for, for PR and ints. It doesn't matter which array, it just knows it's an integer array. Okay, and I'm telling this is the size, it doesn't know what the size, I can simply lie. Okay, so I'm telling what the size is. So now if I run the program over here, this is what happens. As you see it, uh, so it now AR is all garbage. Okay, uh, those C and T max thingies are, are irrelevant, so I'm going to remove them. Remove uh, clear all. Okay, so I don't want the watches over there. Uh, so when you look at AR in here, it, in here because we are in the same scope, it shows all 30 values of AR. You see that? 24, 92, and the rest of zero. Correct. And when I come to vowels, it shows what? Three values for vowels, correct? Let's go to foo in here, OK? Now I'm going to go to PR and ints. As soon as I go in here and I come to nums, it has no idea how many. Because C is not capable of knowing what it is. It just knows it's an array of ints. That's all it knows. That's why it can only show you the first element, because it's not shown sure how many more is coming. OK? And now, one by one, it's going to print it 20, 30, 40. And I forgot to go to new line after that. My apologies. So that's why it's, it's uh, 20,020. I'll fix that. OK? And then 3 comes out and prints it. Now it goes to the other one. Now val, now nums represent vowels. And in here, the first one is 30. And it's going to print those three. OK? So that was the first side effect that I mentioned to you, uh, so you need to know. OK? Uh, and let's stop it. Are we OK with this down, down to this point? Why? Why size minus 1? How many fingers? From 0 to 5 minus 1. How many integers? Size. From i to size minus 1. 
So to know which one is last, I have to reduce by one because that's the rule of indexes of arrays, indices of the arrays. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's, that's actually a very common mistake, and you're gonna have that common mistake for the rest of your life. I still make that mistake. Okay, just remember that, that always, so because I didn't want to print the comma after the last one, I wanted to make sure that I only print the comma if it's not the last one. Therefore, I have I not equal to size minus one. So essentially, uh, to put a, so these are the places that comments are amazing in C language. So you can actually mention over here, don't put the comma after the last one if this is the last element. So it actually tells that that's what's happening. Uh, are we okay down to this point? And that's and and I, and I also usually don't put if statements like that. I I I I am I like to do it this way because everything becomes uniform. Okay, although we, we don't need to put curly brackets if it's only one statement, but putting curly brackets is uh, eye candy. You, your eye doesn't have to go through, it's used to the same thing. I'll explain in two seconds, yes. But you don't know if it's four. Maybe it's five. Maybe it's 50. Maybe it's 900. So, yeah, you could say size is equal to uh, uh, I minus one. I, I don't know. I like, uh, yeah, so you can reduce and make that I plus one. Doesn't make, I don't know, but it. Why did you ask that question? I didn't get. But. The thing is that in programming, you never do, ever. The whole idea of writing a program, that, and that's, again, very common. The whole idea of writing a program to do something once so you can do, so you can repeat it unknown number of times later on. Th otherwise, we are crazy to program. If I knew it was five times, I would do it five times, right? But because I don't know how many, remember this, what I'm saying right now. The whole idea of programming is to do something once to be able to repeat it unknown number of times. And that unknown thing always comes from, uh, and I'm going to show you different ways. Like, this is one strategy to pass the size. We'll go through it soon. Uh, so let's say, So one way to deal with the size, with unknown size of the array is to know the size, right? Another way is to set flags. For example, for example, instead of print int, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a print again. In here, I'm going to say print positive int. Because they're all positive, I am going to remove the size. Got it? <clears throat> and I'm going to say stop when nums i is less than 0, because that's not positive anymore. And have this convention saying, end the data with a negative value, please. So you have to come up with a rule with a person who's using this function. Because it's a, a non-standard thing, because you are, tell, you are not telling them the size, right? So you have to put some kind of a rule. You have to mention, you have to mention what happens. And let's get, the, get rid of commas and stuff and just do uh, space because we don't want to go through the thing. In here, I'm going to say prints integers until negative value is hit, okay, or reached, okay? So now if I want to have int positives, say I have 10 in here, I have to have, if 
Let's say I have five positive numbers that I want to print. If that's the case, then I'm forced to have six integers because I need to mark the end with a negative number, right? So because of that fact, I have to say positive six. Because I have five positive numbers, I have to put six. And in here, I have to say, say 10, 30, um, 2, uh, I don't know, 19, uh, 40, at 4. And then in here, I'm going to say minus 1. Just to flag the end by, my, by, by an impossible value. OK? So I'm going to say flagging the end by a negative value. Yes? Yes, 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 you're absolutely right. Greater than or equal zero. I'll put a thing while that is the case printed. My apologies. Zero is, is considered in a positive side, so I'll put, it, I'll put positive first. Or you can just say zero, I don't know. You want to make zero an impossible value? We can do it. So we can actually say greater than zero and put this one as zero. OK? So now we are printing everything that is, and we stop because we, we know our data is impossible to contain a zero value. Zero is an impossible value. We are flagging the end of it. Now my print positives doesn't need uh, a size anymore. I can simply say PRN positive ints, and in here I can say pause. And as you see, I'm just passing the name of the array. Because that's how it looks like. Now, if I actually run it, you will see that it works perfectly for those. I should have put a. Actually, we don't need that. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it over there. Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Are we okay with this? Anyone, everybody is okay with this? So print positive doesn't need the size. Why? Because it is zero terminated. Correct? Do we all understand this? I want everybody to really know this because I'm going to go switch to a very tricky thing that you need to remember for the rest of your lives. Do we understand why that positive array does not need a size? because it is flagged with a zero. What is zero called in C language? Null. Null. Remember that. Z zero in C language is called null. You can actually use it. You can actually use it. Null, all capital. This is the same as zero. This is the same as zero. All these three are the same. Because in here you are saying, I want the code of the character whose code is zero. <laughs> Crazy thing, but hey. OK? So these are all zeros, different versions of zeros. These, you print all these with percent D, what you're going to see is zero. OK? So that's why I can actually say flagged by zero. So essentially, what I can call it is a null terminated array of positive integers, correct? Is that the correct way of mentioning it? Null terminating array of positive integers. Are we all OK with this, people? Are we all OK with this? Are we all OK one? Are we all OK two? We're OK. Why like that? Yeah, so I, again, I just put a zero, and I'm checking if it's zero. I'm not going to print it. So that's, that's how it is. So look what I'm going to do now. So C arrays and size. We are still talking about the first side effect, that is, the size is not known. 
Okay? So now, we know all these. I don't need to put these things over here, that positive thing. I'm going to put it over there. I'm not going to call these. Just that one. Are we okay with this? Now look what I'm going to do. Character, name, and I'm going to put over there 20. And I'm going to say equal to, that's going to be hard, F, A, R, D, A, ugh, A, I'm happy that I only have six in my name. Okay, for that. And then in here, I'm going to put zero. And then in here, I'll put A, B, C. So what happens over here, name zero will be F, one will be A, two will be R, three, four, five, six, seven will be zero, eight will be capital A, nine will be capital B, and it's got to be capital C, correct? So in here, I'm going to say void PRN uh, car array. And in here, I'm going to say car uh, uh, C array, like that. And I know I'm doing it exactly like that, like that array of integers. So in here, I'm going to say integer i. And I'm going to say for i set to 0 and nay, uh, uh, c array i not equal to 0 and i plus plus, correct? And I'm going to say put care c a r r i. Are we okay with this? Any problem with this? Now in here I can say P R N character array, right? And in here I'm gonna put name. And afterwards I'm gonna go to new line. What's gonna happen is this. So it comes in main. So when you look at this, you will see that this is the name. So F-A-R-D-A-D. -D. You see, remember what I told you zero looks like? <clears throat> you see it actually puts this one. So you could put that one. It doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> OK? And then A, B, C, and the rest, because I didn't set up, they are all set to zero, correct? Are we OK with this? So now. And the, the, the exact same thing is with pause. When we look at it, it's 10, 3, yada, 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 and a 0 at the end, right? So we know that that positive thing, it got printed perfectly, right? <clears throat> now let's go to put character array. So one by one, it's going to print them. And as soon as it gets to 0, it stops and comes out. Does it care there is an ABC after? No, because the stop sign is halfway through. This is a null terminated array of characters. Do we understand this? Yes. Yes. Without that, you're going to have all the garbage in memory printed. <laughs> no, no, it will print nothing, because zero is an impossible ASCII character. There is no figure. The only code for character values that doesn't have a shape is 255 and 0. Two, th these two, they don't have any shape. And 0 is easier, so I'm using that one. OK? 0. Are we OK with this? Now take a look at this one, please. So we understood what happened, right? Now take a look. printf, the name is percent %s, new line, and in here I'm going to put name, the name array. 
printf actually has this built in in it. This loop that we have written up there, that PR in character array, printf has it in its belly. That's actually a standard in C that all programmers follow. Because we don't have any characters in C language, and we would like to really have our names in a program, <laughs> they said, OK, you want to do that, create a character array, and put a zero at the end of data. <clears throat> so if I actually run this, printf will do the exact same thing that we wrote in that program. You see that? Are we OK with this? Not only that, not only that, how do I stop this? One more. OK, not only that, but also, now I'm going to call it C string. That is a shorthand of writing that stupid curly bracket thingy. So it essentially creates an array of characters and null terminates it for you. So you don't have to do it. So now I can actually say my name is and I put the C string in here. C O. Boop. String. Ta da. <clears throat> so, ladies and gents, there is no variable in C language that can contain text. It is absolutely impossible. And because arrays are not single entities, I cannot do this. <clears throat> You cannot do this. You cannot say last name is equal to C string. You can't do that. Because it's an array. It's not a single thing. You cannot do this. That's the second limitation of an array. If you want an array to be set to another array, you have to copy everything one by one. So if I want last name to actually hold what C string has, I need to have a loop over here saying for, int for i set to zero, exactly as I was printing it. And in here, uh, C string i being not equal to zero, OK? And I plus plus, character by character, I have to say last name. I is set to C string. I, one by one. And then after I'm done, because when it's zero, I stop, right? Then after I'm done, I have to follow the standard and null terminate it. Otherwise, if I print it, I'm going to have garbage. I don't know what's in that last name thingy. So in here, I have to follow the standard saying last name i is set to 0. Why? Because after the loop is over, I will be the one that is at the end, right? So I put a 0 over there. So now if I, so just to show you what I mean, in here I'm going to say a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So x, y, and z, I'm going to put that string in it so it has a previous value so you can see. Now I'm going to add this to watch. Watch, watch. Why is it not adding to watch? I have to run it? So while it's running, it adds to watch. Yeah, add watch, and I'm going to add watch. Add, where is that watch? Add watch, add watch. Am I missing that watch somewhere? Oh, there you go. There you go. 
Okay? So now, if you see like this, it says C string is Solimandu and last name is, because it's built into the language, it understands that it's a string. Okay? So it, but, and it comes, but it, it's not going to do that to the array. So it comes over here, it does all the things, then it comes over here. Now it wants to copy the last name into last name. As you see now, S is copied. O, L, E, I, M, A, N, L, O, O, and then it breaks. As soon as I put zero, pop, it cuts everything. Because it knows zero is the end of data in a character string. Are we okay? Yes. I just showed you it's garbage. It has all this stuff in there, but you don't care. Do you care if there is a washroom behind this thing that is smelling bad after this wall? No. The wall is the stop sign. We don't care what's behind this. That's what it is. So all those extra values are still in memory. So if I do not follow the standard and keep printing beyond zero, I'm going to see all those garbage printed. But because I'm following the standard, I'm stopping right there. <clears throat> do we understand this? Yes. Shush! Shush! Oh, what do you mean? You're, you're scanning an integer? <clears throat> okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. So you see that far dad over there? I'm gonna put a zero over there. That's the character shape of zero. That's not the zero. You are reading an integer. You are not reading a character. And read it by all means. <clears throat> Anything that is, I cannot pick up my keyboard because this thing is going to fall. I put it over here. Anything coming from this freaking keyboard is ASCII. It's not the value. So when you hit zero in here, the ASCII code is sent, not the value zero. That's not null termination. You follow what I'm saying? The, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. <clears throat> Give me a second. So in here, if I actually, um, so I'm going to say printf character 0 has the s character. In here, I'm going to say percent %c, thank you, has the ASCII code of percent %d, and go to new line. So this is the answer to your question. In here, I'm going to put 0 and, and 0. And this is what you read. So when I run this program of mine, stop. So when you are reading a 0 from the keyboard, what Scanf is reading is 48. But inside Scanf, there is an algorithm, very complicated algorithm, that changes those ASCII codes to an actual integer. Extremely complicated. Like university compiler design degree. Complicated. So what, when you are entering 100 and you hit enter over there, you hit enter, what the compiler is actually, what the scanf is actually reading is character 49, character 48, character 48. It's receiving these values. Then inside belly of scanf, an algorithm is written to see you set percent %d, so 49 means 1. You set percent %d, so 0 means 48 means 0. You got it? It translated. OK? That is called parsing. So essentially, it parses the characters into an integer. That's what Scanf does. OK? To, that's why I was scared when I said, shush, don't say it, because then I'm going to confuse the heck out of everyone. And my apologies for explaining this, because this is way, it's beyond the level of college, not IPC 144. It's like university compiler design course that you have to get to actually write the C++ compiler. Just imagine. 
write the program that com translates your C code to an executable. That's what it is. Very tough thing to do. Deep breath. OK. So, <clears throat> so far, we went only through the second limitation of the array. And we, went, and we showed you that we either need to know the size or we have to come up with a common stop sign between us. And we already said in character arrays, the common stop sign is the null, not the zero. Zero is 48. It's the value null, OK? That is the stop sign in the data. And they set that standard between all C programmers from day one. And they said, from now on, we're going to call a null terminated array of characters a string. So when you are hearing string, it's not a variable. It's a normal array of character that you are following the standard that having a null at the end. Do we understand this? OK, next step. The second side effect, it's not a limitation, this side effect of arrays not being able to be passed to functions creates an interesting side effect, OK, that I'm going <clears> to <throat> demonstrate it to you now. So this one is C, uh, D, uh, I'm going to say C string standard, which is null ter Mination. dot c. Okay. So in here is this is essentially <clears throat> how to copy a c string. <clears throat> because We cannot do last name equals C string. <clears throat> right? And <clears throat> remember, two seconds. <clears throat> remember this moment. OK? I will exactly know who doesn't show up in class, because they're going to do that assignment thingy. They will try to set a name to another name with assignment because they think it's like any other variable. But now we know text in C language cannot be stored in a single variable. We need series of characters to hold them. Therefore, we cannot assign one to another. Yes, sir. <clears throat> because when the loop ends, it's because I reached to the part that stopped. And that part is where the character is supposed to be 0. And that's why it, re it remains with that value. So when loop ends, <clears throat> because Soleim oh shoot, how many? Soleiman loop. So it's uh, 11 characters, I think. OK? So when it goes, I starts from 0, goes 0, 1, 2, and goes up to 10, that's when the last one is copied, as soon as it becomes 11, the loop breaks and comes out, correct? So i remains 11, which is essentially the index of where null is supposed to be. That's why I use that advantage to just null terminate. So let's see <clears throat> what is a side effect that we can actually use as an advantage for us to be able to do something good with all this. I'm going to bring the foo back. So this time, I'm going to say integer nums, and that's that. OK? And in here, I'm going to say num0 is set to 300. Nums0 is 300. Remember what happened with the last foo? Let's actually bring the last foo. Where is the last foo? It should be somewhere around here. Probably in array intro. No, where did I put that foo thingy? I'll write it again. So void foo integer 
num, and I'm going to say num is 300. Okay, and now in here I'm going to say I'm going to say printf incoming copy is percent D. And num, just to show what it is. Or, you know, I don't know. I don't want to over, I don't want to over comment it. Forget it. So in here, I'm going to say int x is 10. And in here, I'm going to say int y is an array of three. And I'm going to set it to 1. Oh, by the way, we don't have that mechanism for integers. For integers, arrays always curly bracket. It's only characters that they wrote that shortcut that I can put double quotes instead of curly brackets. It's only for characters. So in here, I'm going to say 1, 2, and 3. OK? And I'm going to bring my print ints because it's useful. <laughs> in here, I want to be able to print my integers. So now I'm going to print my integers over. So in here, now I'm going to say, oh, why am I having foo? So I'm going to say foo with array. OK? So now in here, I'm going to say foo x, right? And printf percent %d, new line, and x, right? Now I'm going to say foo with array, and I'm going to pass y over here. And I'm going to say print ints. <clears throat> and I'm going to put y and 3. Are we all OK with this? <clears throat> Are we all OK with this? Pardon me? Just there? Oh, sure, sure. So while you're doing that, let me change the code. <laughs> so I'm going to print before and after over here, OK? So what I'm doing, so print ints, we know it prints integers. So no biggie over there, right? It prints the contents of an array of integers. So that's fine. I'm going to just close it. We don't need it. So I have a single integer 10, and I have three integers in y, that is 1, 2, and 3, from y0 to y2, correct? Now in here, I'm going to say foo x. So we know that this, what happens over here will be this, which is essentially, uh, what is that? Uh, integer foo int num will be set to x, right? And in here, it's going to be prn ints uh, int nums will be set to y, and size will be set to 3. Correct? And in here, we're going to have foo with array. Int nums will be set to y. And that's it. Correct? So let's run the program. So it comes over here, does all this good stuff, and it actually prints it. So we know that the three numbers are printed, so we have no problem with it. Now we go with full with array. So it comes up, it comes up, and num is essentially the three arrays, right? And it has, so when I say num zero, it means first element will be set to 300, correct? Are we okay with this? Now we get out. This is the beautiful side effect. So when you are passing an array to a function, because it cannot pass the whole thing, it just copies the name. So essentially, it's like a snake with two heads. <laughs> so both are the same array. So essentially, the array in main that is called y will be the exact same array in full with array, but it's now called nums. Anything you do to nums, it happens to y. 
You follow what I'm saying? If you tell me, give me a chair, if you get, tell me, give me a chair, I'll give you this chair, correct? If you give me, tell me, give me six chairs, I'm going to say, there you go, go pick them up. So what happens, now I'm not going to build you and give you a new chair. I'm going to show you those six chairs, and you've got to go and pick the ones that are mine. Because I cannot pass the whole thing, only the name is passed, and therefore the array is shared. Unlike other things in, uh, so essentially, where they are in memory, that is sent to the function. If you change an array inside the function, the original will change. Unlike single variables, when you pass a single variable, the original is not changed. Let me demonstrate. It means if I actually, instead of x over here, Instead of x over here, I'm going to answer your question in a second. Instead of x over here, let me just complete it. So instead of, so I'm not going to have an x over here. And instead, I'm going to say y0. That's a single one too, right? And in here, I'm going to say, So num argument is num, <clears throat> so it shows what it is. And the exact same thing. The difference is that when this is called, and let me take this out, and I'm going to print the array again. So the arrays are printed over there. So <clears throat> when the program is running now, when the first one is, it is, because it's a single variable, num will be a copy of what y0 is. Therefore, it is 1. And after you change it to 300, you come back over here, nothing happens to that one. You just send the copy to it. But as soon as you pass an array to a function, because the entire array is not passed, and only where they are in memory is passed, their address is passed, their name is passed, whatever you do over there, although it's one, but when you change the value and you come out, you actually change the original. So with arrays, with arrays, if you change the argument of an array, you will change its value, beneficial and dangerous at the same time. Why? Because in here, in here, inside print ints, you can easily change the value of nums. So if I can say over here nums, I set to 500 which means I'm going to print it, but after I get out, everything's going to be 500 in it. Correct? The first time I run it, if I change the value, it changes the value outside. Correct? It's dangerous. How do I fix that? It's something called const. When you do something like this, you are enforcing yourself not to make a mistake. If your function is supposed to only print it, you are not supposed to change the array, correct? Put a const in front of it. It's like putting a thread around your finger just to remind yourself I'm not supposed to change it. Doing that means what's coming in is read only. Don't change it. So now that's the proper way of printing integers. So now in here, because it's read only, it's going to tell you expression must be a modifiable value to be set. You cannot do this. So that's forbidden. Why? Because nums is read only. Why did we do it? Why don't I do const over here for num? Because it's stupid if I do. 
It's a copy. Who cares if it changes? Right? It's a copy. Change it. Nothing's going to happen to the original. With arrays, very dangerous. It may change the outcome. But we can use that as our benefit. How? I can come to my utils now, and I can say, wait a minute. You said that I can actually receive an array and change its value, but if I put a constant, it will not change. So I can write this, string copy. In here, I'm going to say character destination, constant character source. So I have two arrays, right? And I know source is going to be null terminated, correct? So what I will do, I'm going to go to my utils. I'm going to go to my utils. And in my utils, I'm going to write integer i. We know the drill. For i set to 0, i less than, uh, sorry, and source i being not equal to 0, and i plus plus, <clears throat> destination i is set to source i. And then I'm going to say destination i set to 0. We did that with last name, right? Why don't I just use it for everything? Because if I pass an array, the original changes, right? So now I can use it actually to create functions to do copying and stuff for everything that I want to do. So now I can come over here <clears throat> in this program of mine and actually, <clears throat> now actually, good news, you can, Scatf even knows that. So Scatf even knows how the thing is. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So in here, uh, let me just, uh, in this one I'm going to say, <clears throat> Array arguments will change the original, original if modified. Now I'm going to use that as my benef as as as, some, as a beneficial thing. So what I'm going to do, let's get rid of all these things, and I don't want print intels or anything like that. I have the utils over there. I just write the program, right? <clears throat> so I can have over here something like this. I can say <clears throat> what I can. What can I say? I can say. What can I say? I can say uh, character csdr is set to. Uh, Homer, and in here, character name, oh, 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 50, and 50 over here. <clears throat> now I can say, I included utils, right? I can say, <clears throat> utils. Let me, because I'm using camel notation, let me use camel notations. Camel notation was to Capitalize like that, so I'm going to capitalize it over here too. Okay, we're good. So in here, I'm going to say SDR. So I'm going to say printf <coughs> CSDR is <coughs> percent %s and new line, that's CSDR. <coughs> and then I'm going to say SDR copy into name. The C string. <clears throat> so it's going to get the CSDR, not change it because I made it constant to make sure I don't change it by mistake. Then I'm going to say copy everything character by character from the source to the destination. And now I can say printf name is percent %d backslash n and name. Let's walk through it. Did I say, oh, <laughs> and you see, it's, it's dumb, actually. If you do that, it's going to show you some strange number that we don't care at the moment. But anyways, so thank you for letting me know. <clears throat> so it comes over here. We know that that happens. So I'm going to come over here and this one over here. And uh, 
So Homer is printed, that's fine. Now I'm going to go F11, so it's going so to go to my string copy function. And over there, I'm going to remove a clear all. I'm going to add this to watch and add this one to watch. OK, as you see, I have all garbage in here in the destination, right? So one by one, it's going to set it. H, O, M, E, R, and now null termination. Homer is copied. I get out, come back over here. Name is Homer. Are we OK with this? What else? What if I want to add a name to another name? So I can actually write a function to concatenate a name to another. So put a name after. So I want to have Simpson added afterwards. I can actually write a function for it. I can call it, what do I call it? So I call it word str cat to concatenate. So I'm going to say concatenate to the destination. So it doesn't copy it. The source, which means it's going to add the source to the end of the other one. How do I do it? Oh, I put it in here. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, I should have put it in a header file. Copy. So I'm going to say in the header file, that's the, that's the, what should we call it? Uh, uh, the prototype, and this is the body of the function. So what do I need to do? I need to go to the end of destination, right? I just wrote a for loop that did that, correct? So I'm just going to copy the exact same thing. So I'm going to say copy. This assumes that destination actually has something. So I'm going to say destination i, and I'm not going to write anything in here. And I'm not going to set anything in here. So I'm just going to say, start from 0, while destination i is not null, keep going. So at the end of the for loop, i becomes where the null is in destination, right? And that's the end of the other one, correct? So now I'm going to create another one over here, j. And I'm going to say for j set to 0. And, and oh, that's source, not SRS. <laughs> Source. And I'm going to say source <clears throat> i being not equal to 0. Oh, sorry, source j being not equal to 0. And in here, I'm going to say j plus plus, correct? So that's going to that's gonna keep going through everything, correct? Now in here, I'm going to say destination i. So put at the end of i what is in source j. So it's going to start from the beginning of that one, but I have to make sure that I add 1 to i and I keep going, right? So it's going to keep going like that. So one by one, it's going to add to the end of the other one the, the, uh, what is coming from the beginning of the other ones. I will we'll show it. And at the end, when we are done and stopped, that's when we are supposed to set the destination i to 0, which is wrong, but we'll find out, OK? So I'll do SDR cat now to see how it works. So in here, in my main, you don't need to learn this. I'll tell you soon why. So now I'm going to say SDR cat. So in here, I'm going to have, are we late? No. So in here, I'm going to say last name. 50, I'm going to set it to Simpson. I'm going to SDR cat to name, and I'm going to say over here last name. OK? Now I'm going to say again, name is. Let's walk through it and see what happens. So let's stop this, and I'm going to stop right here and run it right to that point. So it stops at the breakpoint. Let's bring it over here. All right. So now, name has Homer in it. 
last name has Simpson in it. I'll go to the SDR cat, F F11, I and J. I keep looping through this thing, and the destination is going to keep going. So I is going to, so let's actually look at it. Uh, let's see what we have in I. So I'm going to add watch. So two, three, four, five, and it comes out. You see that? So I is five, and J is zero now, correct? So it puts S after where zero is. Look, S is there. Adds one, I, M, P, S, O, N, and it comes out, puts a stop sign at the end. Done. Concatenation happened. So now I have something that, so I do not have a plus equal for a race but I can always write a function. So that SDR cat is like you are saying for integers i plus equal b. Uh, you, you're adding the value of b to i. It adds the value of one string to another because it's an array you add. So <clears throat> these are the things that you need to go and work with. And soon, soon I'll show you that you do not need to implement any of these because they are all implemented in a, in a library thing called string header file. <laughs> so SDR copy, SDR cat, S string compare, SDR, SDR to search within a thing, to find out. Because strings are something that we work with it every day, they actually created the header file with all these functions. Not that the functions are difficult to write, as you see. The functions are just a loop, or worst case scenario, two loops, right? And I'm teaching you the first day you learn the arrays. So it's not difficult. But because it's used so many times, they actually put them all inside a header file so everybody can use it. So when you see strings, they are nothing but character arrays. Nothing but character arrays. But we only follow the standard of marking the end with a zero. And a good thing is that we actually, <clears throat> so let's actually put this over here, show you something. So I'm going to write, um, uh, let's come over here. Uh, so this one is EF, and the F will be uh, STR copy and STR, uh, oh, strings, C strings. And copying an ETC, you know what it is, okay? So I'm going to come back over here. And they even built that in Scanf, by the way. They even built that in Scanf. So um, I can have something like this. So let's call this one full name. And I'm going to put 100 characters in there. So I'm going to say over here, printf first name. And I'm going to say over here, scanf percent %s. And in here, you don't put the address of anymore, because functions are already addresses. You saw that they actually, they, you, you pass it to a function, it changes. So for, for strings, you just put it as is. So I'm going to say over here, name. No ampersand is needed. We just show you that. OK? And I can now say printf last name. And in here, I'm going to say scanf percent %s last name. Now I'm going to say SDR cat. Oh, and I'm going to make full name an empty string, which means the very first one is null, right? Index 0 is null. Or we can just leave it like that. But anyways, I do SDR copy into full name, the name. I do SDR cat to full name a single space, 
because double quotes is an array, right? We know that. We said it. We know how it was, so we can actually use it. And I can say SDR cat to full name, last name. And I'm going to say printf, your full name is percent %s, new line, and I'm going to put over here full name. Because scanf reads it, let's go step by step and see how it works. <clears throat> so as you see, the first one is null. The rest are garbage. I didn't need to make it empty, but I just did it. So when I say an empty string, what does it mean? It means index 1 is 0. Uh, sorry, index 0 is 0, not 0. Uh, because I'm stupid. We don't need it. <laughs> we don't need to do that. Completely no reason. We, I'll remove it the next time. <laughs> yeah, we don't need it. So, so we come over here. We say if, if we first show, now we are scanning over here, right? So in here, I'm going to say Fred, and I hit enter. As soon as I, you do that, you see that name is actually now Fred. It knows that it has to. But what it does, it keeps reading the characters until it reaches a white space character. A white space character could be space, tab, new line, uh, form feed, all the space. All, go read the notes. You'll see what the white space character are. So any white space will stop it. And then it reads it. And then it comes over here. Last name. So that's that one. And we just wrote string copy. So it copies that one in full name. So now full name is Fred. Now full name is Fred and a space. Now full name is Fred and a space and a last name, therefore Fred Soleil. OK? And we did it all from scratch. So, <clears throat> we, so the string header file, if you include string header file, SDR copy is exactly that, but the C is lowercase. So it's SDR copy all lowercase, SDR cat all lowercase. But I'd rather use mine. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to implement all the other ones that we use in my utils. And I use that one because it's better to know how it works and then use what they give you. OK? So that's what we are going to do. Any questions down to this point? OK? This is something that, sadly, I, the reason that I started so early and I went in deeply into it right from scratch because any student I received from IPC 144 in second and third semester, still they don't understand that strings are nothing but character arrays. They still think it's a variable for some reason. They still assign it to each other. Okay? We want to start now. Make that mistake now so we can fix it by the end of the semester so when you get to OP244, you're good to go. Okay? I don't want, when I'm teaching you aspects of object orientation, you're still thinking how a for loop works, right? When we get there, I want you to be good in C++, and that's my, my goal, all right? Uh, any questions down to this point? And it's 127. I think we are three minutes past our time, right? OK, my apologies didn't give you a break. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to push these, and I'm going to put the recordings later on. So I'm just going to push it right now so you have the source code. Please, go play with it. Try to, <clears throat> uh, try to write other functions for, for strings. That's actually very difficult. I wanted to say, write a function that compares two strings and returns minus 1 if the first one is greater than, say, less than second one, returns 0 if they are equal, returns positive 1 if one is greater than the other. You write that, that's the next function. <clears throat> but anyways. <clears throat>